folks, welcome to video one tonight of Oz Cyclone Chasers Cyclone Updates on the 24th of February 2013. The first video, we'll look to, to the Coral Sea, there's a weak low out there, we're going to have a look at that, not much happening with it, but we still need to have a look at it. Uh, there's a WA low that could turn into a Cyclone shortly, that's not Cyclone Rusty, Cyclone Rusty will be in video two. Um, and there's also the potential for a Gulf of Carpentaria system out towards the uh, two week period. So we do need to discuss all of those things. Just a heads up here, our iTunes app is finally out. So if you go to iTunes and you search for Oz Cyclone Chasers, you'll find our iTunes app. It's $1.99 from the App Store and uh, all, that, all those funds help to support us to make sure that we can chase next time there is a big monster WA system, regardless of whether we get sponsored or whether we get businesses that, that show any interest in advertising with us. So we hope that you can support us with that. All right, let's get into it. Heaps of cloud happening everywhere, really. We've got an upper level low here over central Queensland. We've got an associated massive amounts of convection out here in the Coral Sea. Also some good thunderstorm activity out here towards central Queensland, southeast Queensland. Now the low we're looking at is out here near Willis Island. Look, it's it's not in a very good spot for further development, but we'll talk a bit more about it when we look at model guidance. Up here we've got a lot of convective activity happening with a monsoon trough, a developing monsoon trough. Um, unfortunately for the Northern Territory there is a little bit of a lull here in your monsoon because you're sort of stuck between two active areas, one in the far northern Coral Sea and, or the, the um, Solomon Sea and the other one out towards the southeast Indian Ocean um, and obviously Rusty which we'll talk at length about, you'll be sick of it. Uh, by video too, um, it happening out here. But overall, there's another low pressure system further out to the northwest, probably just off your screen here. That's heading towards Cocos Island, uh, or sorry, south of Cocos Island, and will continue to move that way, not pose a threat to Australia. But we do need to just have a look at it. So let's do that. So there's Cocos Island just there, um, and you can see that the system is well to the east of that island chain, uh, sorry, that island, and it's going to push to the south and then just in a general southerly direction, but it may drift more towards the southwest depending on whether a ridge takes hold underneath it. Um, look, overall, folks, this is not going to pose a threat to any Australian territory, even if you live on the islands up here. What you might get, though, is to the north of that system, you might get some very, very squally northwesterly winds um, in that area. So uh, just be aware of that. There will be some swells there. We do know that we do have some followers from the Cocos Island and from Christmas Island, too. So we do have some followers there. So if you are following us from there, uh, just be aware of the system, but also be aware that there's very little chance of it actually directly coming into towards your towards your island it's likely to head to in a general southerly direction but as I say may take a bit more of a westerly turn in about 24 to 48 hours um, depending on how it impacts or how it interacts with a ridge underneath it we can see the JTWC have actually got this low a lot further to the north um, than the Bureau do. Uh, they've got the system out here uh, to the northeast of the Cocos Islands. Now, if it does form up here, we may start to talk a little bit more chance of the system actually directly impacting the island. But because it's at the moment there's so much convection in there, it's difficult to pinpoint an actual centre of the system. So um, it is expected, as I say, to push in a general southerly direction. But if it forms up here and pushes in a southerly direction and then decides to take that southwest turn, um, it might get a little bit closer to Cocos Island than the Bureau expect it to. We can see here there's the Cocos Islands uh, and we can see that the JTWC has pinpointed the system out here uh, and once again the Bureau pinpoints it a, f a fair bit further to the south but look overall folks the consensus is a south and then a southwest movement out, out here prob probably to the south of the islands but as I say look at this vigorous, uh, vigorous amount of convection out here to the west it's all associated with some very very strong monsoonal northwesterlies coming in north of the system so those northwesterly monsoonal winds um, pushing in this way, so you're going to get squally conditions, heaps of showers, heaps of storms in that entire area. There is absolutely no thinking at this stage in time of this going anywhere near the WA mainland coast though. Alright, so that's about where we'll leave it. Well, we might just have a quick look at the expected track. 
So if we take a look at the latest run of the GFS model for this particular system, we see that it's the GFS has initialized it a lot more towards where the Bureau of Meteorology has initialized it as opposed to where the JTWC has put it. So uh, it, it let's assume that this is the spot that it does form in. You can see here the northwesterly monsoonal flow um, just to the north of the Cocos Islands. Uh, you know, we're talking gale force winds to the north gale force winds to the south not quite wrapping around the system yet so not a tropical cyclone just yet but geez it's not too far away according looking at those uh that wind radius now you can see here it pushes just to the south of the cocos islands um, not by much only by a couple of hundred k's according to the gfs and then continues in a south to southwesterly direction as it slowly intensifies um, now bear in mind that even though it's south have a look at these really strong winds 35 to 45 knots out here um, over the Cocos Islands. So very, very important to note that even though the system might push or, or is likely to push well to the south and not actually this, the centre of the system not actually expected to affect the Cocos Islands, but the very, very strong monsoon flow to the north is going to make it appear as though you're in a Cat 1 cyclone anyway. So for those of, for those of our subscribers and, and friends there in the Cocos Islands, please be aware of that, that yes, you probably won't see the middle of the system, but you're likely to see some very heavy rain and some very strong winds associated with its circulation and the monsoon to the north. All right, folks, that's where we're going to leave that one. As I said, absolutely no chance of it really coming back in towards the WA coast. Um, nothing that we've seen suggests anything remotely resembling that. So that's where we'll leave that. We'll go to the Coral Sea. So as we head out into the Coral Sea, looking at the European model run this morning, uh, we can see that there's that there's just very, very weak winds all over the place. There is a trough system um, offshore, uh, and that's all associated, really, there's an upper level low. It's all a very complex pattern. There's an upper level low over Queensland. There's an associated trough system out here in the Coral Sea. Now, this low pressure area that we're watching is sort of out, near, out here near Willis Island, um, but really, if we look at the upper level winds, folks, uh, there's just really nothing that's suggesting it pushing back towards the coast. See, if it gets strong, um, it's just going to get whisked straight away out to the uh, out to the north, out to the southeast, or the even the east southeast. But there is something out there. There is something out there for us to to just have a look at. But as I say, look, it's it's all seems to be part of uh, a more more so a trough feature as opposed to a, a designated low pressure region. Now by tomorrow though, or sorry by Tuesday morning, we do start to see a bit of a low circulation here happening. Um, but as I say, look, you can see here it's just continually slightly drifting out to the east. All part, you can see the trough there. Um, and really folks, there's, there's not much to talk about with this one. It doesn't have much cyclone potential at this point in time. But it is something we, as I say, the, the Coral Sea is warm. We showed that in the in the couple of videos ago, how warm it is. But you can see here the circulation really not getting itself together. There is a northwest flow into it. There is a southeast flow into it. But if we overlay wind shear into the system by Wednesday, you can see conditions do seem okay in the far north. But if it heads into the central Coral Sea, absolutely no chance of development. So its only chance of developing really is if it can stay north. And then if we overlay the upper level winds over this image, we can see that if it does stay anywhere over the Coral Sea at the moment, it's going to push from west to east anyway. So it's not going to impact Queensland really in any way um, other than for a bit for an area of interest for us at least uh, you can see here the system we're looking now at the 925 hectopascal level um, it just sort of loiters in the eastern coral sea and just really doesn't want to do anything doesn't doesn't deepen significantly um, over the next five to seven days uh, but it just sits there and you know what if if it does happen to sit there for long enough um, conditions will eventually be right for it if it can stay if it can stay a feature um, as I say wind shear out there still pretty good there's a bit of shear in the central coral sea but really in the north and northeastern coral sea it looks very very good out there but once again, I stress that if we look at the upper level winds even later this week, even later this week we're starting to, we're starting to see them ease, but they're still going west to east. So 
Um, unless it stays in the Western Coral Sea, the Northwestern Coral Sea, it's unlikely to impact the coast. If we have a look in the longer term, we have another upper level trough pushing through the Queensland, and so we have those west to east upper level winds again all through the Coral Sea. When they start to ease off, we just get another one. It's just been the case all year so far, all, all cyclone season so far. So even if the system decides to get itself going, it just simply cannot push back towards the coast because those upper level winds will continue to drift it out towards the southeast. Alright folks, so that's the Queensland low. Starting next weekend, we do start to take a bit more of an interest in the Gulf of Carpentaria because we start to see some very, very strong monsoonal northwesterlies kicking in uh, in the region uh, around about next weekend, 20 to 30 knots sort of northwesterlies, particularly in the western Gulf. And so while models are very hazy in whether actually anything develops in here, we do need to focus on this region because at, at the eastern edge of that monsoonal surge is where we get a little bit of vorticity happening, a little bit of spin. The waters in the Gulf of Carpentaria are very, very warm. Courtesy of Weather Zone, you can see that the waters in the Gulf are very warm, warmer than normal. I mean, normally they're about 28 to 30, now they're over 30 degrees. The waters in the northeast Coral Sea, also very warm. Also, the waters off the Pilbara coastline, very warm. We'll talk a bit more about that one in, in video too. But uh, suffice to say, look, if something can get going at the surface, out here in the Gulf, that we don't have those wind shear issues, we still have those upper level westerly winds though, so anything that does form in the Gulf is likely to push more towards the east than it is towards the west. So it is something we need to look at in the longer term. Models are suggesting this area may become a hot spot for activity as we head into week two of March. Alright folks, that's where we leave video one. Video two gets into the real stuff, into the northwest WA. Big, big, big situation happening there, uh, and that video will be very important for people in the northwest to watch. Thanks very much for watching this one tonight, and we'll talk again tomorrow night.